But his plan was to go to the Union, and that didn't work out. And he was afraid to call and tell me because he thought I might insist that he be here. So he's at home. He had a problem with the gas. And there he has no feeling well either. So that's one thing we'll be praying about later. Right now, I'm going to welcome to our service. Thank you for being here at Rutgerfield Baptist Church. And I always uh, thank God for the message from the Word of God. That's what's preached here at this church. And we hope you enjoy the day. It's Father's Day. And not only Father's Day, it's a blessing to me to have a son that's here, a granddaughter that's here, and the rest of my children, they texted and called me all morning. That was one of them. So I've been blessed. I pray that you have too. Uh, right now, we have some young men that got some things for the father that are going to hand out. And they're handing them out now. All you fathers, raise your hand so they'll know. Father, if you're a male, raise your hand. You're going to be a father one day. Praise the Lord, right? Amen. <laughs> Brooks is testifying. Yes, sir. All males. All males. All men. All As you can see, we had Bible school this week, so everything's kind of been disconnected. We're trying to put it all back together. Well, they are. I'm not. But anyway, so everyone got them a booklet this morning. Everything's good. Uh, right now, we're just going to go to the Lord in prayer and we begin our service today. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day that you've given us. And uh, so good to begin this day with you, Lord in your house, and we just come before you now, Father, praying with, that uh, we have humble hearts and grateful spirits just for what you have given us. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be our constant companion always, and especially today, Father, we lean on you for understanding of your word. We thank you, Father, for the words that will be spoken here today because you've given them to us. And we just pray now, Father, as we begin our service, that you bless it. Bless us and bless those who are here today, Father, for we ask these things in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. 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 Brother Bill. No, Wilbur. I'm sorry. Please rise as we sing hymn number 346, The Church is One Foundation.
Good morning. Uh, announcements. We'll start with that. Uh, Teresa has one, and she's going to give you some information in regards to our homecoming and revival, which is in another week. I think that there are some other announcements on the back of your bullet, and I'm going to let you read them. Uh, anybody else have announcements that we need to give everybody? Okay, Kathy. The church would just like to thank Kendra Morris and Barbara Nemo for putting together the BBS this past week. Without y'all stepping up and agreeing to do it, it wouldn't have happened. So thank you. Very Okay, um, this morning we're going to go into Psalm 128 and read that, and says that, that goes along with Wayne's sermon today. I'll give you a second to go find it. Psalm 128. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your sons will be like olive shoots around your table. This is the man blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. And may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem. And may you live to see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Amen. We have a time of prayer. We, we have a prayer list which is in your bulletin. And I challenge you to read that and look at that and pray for those that are on that list. We will, any other special prayer requests we need today that aren't on there? Yes, Owen. Yes. Um, Bill, Mary Beth Morris's father passed away on Friday. Okay. And, um, they were in Europe. They're on their way back now. But we need to remember. Okay. Uh, there was a police officer shot and killed um, this past weekend, and we just asked for everybody's prayers for his family, uh, his friends, and his co workers during this difficult time. Uh, he's a young man doing his job and uh, lost his life. So just pray for him this day. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, I just like to um, praise Jesus that they came out and turned out so well, and that we brought the kids that came and they got to hear the gospel, and that no one was hurt the entire time, <laughs> and that all of our volunteers uh, felt good and come every day. So, okay. 
Amen. Okay. Amen. Anything else? Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. With us. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, and we lift up to you, though, the request that we had, special request we had today for those, the family, the, that, the police officer that was killed in this process, doing his duty so that we can protect us. And we thank you for those that give their, their time and, in many cases, their lives so that we can have that safety. We thank you for the good report about the the amputation that was done and, and this man's ability to, to witness to others and help us to be that bold when we when we put in places so that we can do that. We thank you for a, a good VBS and everything went well there and we pray that you would bring these kids back and bring them with their parents so that they can come to know you if they don't know you now. We lift up to you the many people that are on our prayer list, Father. Some are dealing with health issues. We pray that you would Give the doctors wisdom on what, to, what they can do or what they should do. And if it's time for them to be home, I pray that the families would be ready to, res, to let them go and, and let them live their lives until you take them home. We, we thank you for it. We pray for those that don't know you, Father. We, we have people on our list that don't know you. I pray that you bring people in their lives that will witness to them and, and plant the seed so that they can come to know you and, and have the peace that we have, peace from you. We thank you for the blessings you give us and, and, and help us to be following whatever you call us to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Okay. We have an offering? Yeah, offer to our hand. Please stand as we sit, sing hymn number <clears throat> 585, Count Your Blessings.
message that might touch our ears and touch our hearts. We ask you to bless these tithes and offerings that we're about to give. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. 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 <laughs> some special music this morning. Mr. Roy Brown and Don Thomas are coming. Flames devour waves or flow. 
If you would this morning, turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 8, starting in verse 40. We'll read the remainder of this chapter. There's a message here, and it really uh, should touch Father's hearts today, every day. It's a message for everyone, young, women, and all of them. Because it's a funny thing about how this parable was put together. There's three of them. The one we left out, the Gadarene, the, uh, the Gadarene demoniac. But we're going to read about Jairus and the woman with the issue of blood. It's funny that he doesn't divide. He puts the middle, uh, the woman with the issue of blood, right in the middle of things. But you'll see why when we get into it. Let us read together. Everybody ready? And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there was a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had only one daughter, about 12 years old, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him, and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all of her living Upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. Came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood staunched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied Peter, and they who were with him said, Master, the multitude throng you and press you, and you say, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody has touched me. For I perceived that virtue was gone out of me, and when the woman saw that he was not he, she was not hid, she came trembling, and falling down before him, declared to him all the people that uh, for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. While he yet spoke, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not. Believe only that she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept. And bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but asleep. For they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out, and took her by the hand, and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit again, again came, came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. If that don't make you want to shout hallelujah, something's wrong with it. That's a story, and to be told, it's a story that we need to hear. Reformation. We need something today to move people. It's not so much you that's here today, because you want to be here, and you want to receive God's word. It's out there, you know. If people could just hear the word, you know, what changes this world would be, what changes this this country would be. But the thing of it is, we're sitting here and we need this word. We need it for a purpose. Sometimes we get stagnant, we get lazy, we get with God. I'm not talking about with other things. We're too involved in the world. 
but we need the Word of God. Here's a, a remarkable thing about this story. Is it's a, it is a parable. There's a trilogy of parables right here. It's sacred verses of Scripture. Jesus is speaking through this whole thing just practically. And we know that during this time he was in Capernaum. And that was like being at home to him because Nazareth, he was a Nazarene. He was kicked out and they didn't like him. They wouldn't believe him. But he found Capernaum a place to where a lot of healings went on throughout the Bible. Not just these right here that we're looking at today. But this was the place that he went. It was on the banks of uh, the north shore of Galilee is where Capernaum was. And what we, what we see in this story is an encounter. He encounters a man, Jairus, but then Jairus encounters God himself. I think every time we come in these doors to this church, if we don't come seeking God, it does something is lacking. We come seeking, show me something, Lord. I need your help. You know, there's not a soul in here today that don't need God's help. Amen. All right. So, if we go through this story, you'll see some things that stand out. That uh, I've read the story numerous times. I, I don't think I've ever spoke about this. I know in Bible study I've probably taught this, but it, it's a, such a wonderful story uh, that we can come to and see the effects of not only seeking God, but when prayer comes to man, when he's in need. It's like when you look at verse, look at verse 41. Behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. Ruler means he, he was of high esteem. He was, he was something. He wasn't a nobody. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into the house. He humbled himself before Jesus. On his knees, he got down. I need you, Lord. I need you. Well, the, the reason he needed him is right there in the next verse. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she, and she lay a dying. I don't know about you, but I do believe you're like me. When my children, something was going on in this young man's life, or the other two, I was troubled in my heart. Then I got grandchildren, and then it got worse. It affected me even more. This little one here, she used to stay sick all the time. And I was her Friday escort to the doctor. So, but what a blessing it is, because she's more like a daughter to me than a granddaughter. Because she was always around Poppy. You know, I'm Poppy to them. But then comes great-grandchildren. And so now I'm so infatuated with them that I would give them the world if I had it, you know. So I'm in a big, I'm in big trouble, you can see that. <laughs> but see, that's the love of God working through you. It, the designation of man was to have family, his own family, and to be there for them, to protect them. There were so many times that I wasted with my children that I should have been there for them. But then there come a day that I changed. Praise God for that. But I was not there at times when they needed daddy. They need daddy to pick them up and hold them and tell them I love you. To talk to them. Not to scold them and to whip them and, and threaten them but to love them. The more you love them, the better they can be. And then some kids say, watch this, Daddy. <laughs> I'll rebuke you. you know. But it just happens. But we see this story. Just look at this. Can you imagine Jairus' heart right now? He's saying, Jesus, I need you. He knew who he was. He knew that Jesus had the power of healing. He knew that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God. 
You say, well, how do you know that? Just keep reading. And then here we go. We're getting ready to move now. And, and he, this woman, having the issue of blood, 12 years, which she had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. She knew everything she possessed, she was selling to take, give to physicians, trying to help her. Now, uh, it says it's another, another thing you look at here. The daughter's 12 years old. The woman's had a problem for 12 years. Strange, but significant. 12 is a very popular number in the Bible. It's used for 12 tribes, 12 apostles, 12 gates in heaven. So start looking up your 12, you come up with 187 of them in the Bible. But we see Jairus is near Jesus, and he notices it. Whoa, something's going on here. It's really... Uh, what, it's really, I'm, uh, I'm troubled. We need to go. And when he spent this, uh, she spent all of her money, came behind him and touched the garment, and immediately her issue of bloods quit. Jesus says, in other words, he's standing there, Jairus says, let's go, let's go. He says, somebody touch me. Now, was it Jesus couldn't move, or was this the plan of Christ? I think as you read, you see that it was his plan. It's always his plan. We get so upset because it is not going my way. And Jesus don't get in any hurry with us either, you know. So you see this. He came behind and he touched me and immediately the issue of blood stopped. Jesus said, he touched me. And when all denied Peter and they, which were with him, Master, the multitude throng you and press you. And you say, who touched me? Peter, that's Peter for you. What's the problem, Jesus? Jesus said, somebody has touched me for I perceive that virtue, that power is gone out of me. And it's another thing about Jesus. Every time that, that he done things, it was like, it's like with you or I, it's like when you do something unordinary, you feel like sometimes you're just empty, like I'm flat. Something's wrong. Jesus just describing what it feels like to lose that, that energy, that power. In other words, he could even tell when someone touched him. Now, she touched him with a tassel. He was a Jew, so he had four tassels on his robe. And she, that's all she got a hold of. That's, that's all she touched. But it was enough to touch him, you know. So Jesus said, somebody has touched me, and I perceive my virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling. We see this woman, she evidently was trying to hide. I'm sure the woman was probably embarrassed. I'm sure the people around her, they didn't care much for her. Well, she's sick all the time. She's of the devil, you know, because she can't be healed. She wasn't probably able to work. But what little she did have, she gave it to the physicians trying to heal her, you know. So, here we go. When the woman saw that she was not here, she came trembling and falling before him, and she declared unto him, but for all the people, for what cause she had touched him, so she was not withholding anything from anyone, nothing at all, and she, how she was healed immediately. I don't know if she screamed it out, I'm healed. I don't know what she done, the Bible doesn't say. I'm sure she was kicking up her heels, though. If you had been hurting so bad and you had losing blood, she must have been, I don't know how old do you think this woman was. She couldn't have been real old. This bleeding problem was probably a female problem, you know, that, she, that no one could seem to stop the blood. That is what your theologians say. When you study the scripture, that's what you come up with. Um, and he, he said to her, now, this is typical Jesus, but see, here we go. We're, we're talking about someone. Someone is saved. A lady becomes a daughter. Men become sons. What a privilege that is to know, right? It's in the Bible. I'm not telling you this. God says this. He says to her, says, daughter. That's pretty personal, isn't it? 
You just don't, men, you don't call every lady running around, oh, hi, daughter. You might say a lot of them, the, the Christian men say, hi, sister. <laughs> you know, that's appropriate. But daughter means something. And not only was she a woman, she's referred to here as a daughter that speaks of relationship. She's my child. He claims her. I've, not only was she healed by touching my garment, because I didn't touch her, she touched me. But I have healed her and made her whole. He made her whole. It's something we all, everyone seated here today, needs to be made whole. You said, well, I'm saved. I say you need to be made whole. Salvation is a great thing, but if you don't do anything with it, you're not made whole. You know? That's why a church is always wanting people to help. People to go do this, people to do that. Not big. It's not like they're going to work you to death. Don't want that, but we want some of your time given to, to the Lord, you know. It's a way to minister to others. And here, I, I don't know what he had in plan for her, but I guarantee you she was going to do something with her life. He said, your faith has made you who? Go in peace. Leave. Go. Go wherever you want to. You're, you're healed. And while he yet spoke, there came one from the ruler of the synagogue. This word gets... Jairus, I don't know what he was doing through all this. I would have been going crazy. I would have been going back, well, well, she's dead, now what? You know, fed up with it. You know, well, Lord, I came to you. But then there again, there's something in me that makes me feel like that he kind of knew if he's taking his time, he knows something that I don't. I hope he was that smart. It says he was pretty sharp. He was of the synagogue, right? So we read on here, we say, the, the, one of his men, uh, while he yet spoke, there came one from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, to Jairus, your daughter is dead. And that's final, isn't it? That's the end, isn't it? That's the worst news I think anybody that's in the service and you see the uniforms come to a door and the person coming to that door, the mother or wife, and they're to pick, open that door, they look and they almost faint because they know what the message is. Sad. In. The, oh, it's over. And we look at this right here. Jesus heard it. And he answered him and said, Fear not. Don't worry about it. I got this. Mm. That's why we call on Jesus. We know he's got it. Amen. Right. I can call on him anytime, day or night. I can be in, like I'm dying. And sometimes I feel like maybe that's what's going to happen in, my, in this past year a couple of times. But he is always there and I always come out of it stronger. Not only physically, but mentally. Oh, my Jesus, what he can't do. That's where the growth began. It's not with your physical strength. Paul, we know Paul. Paul told Jesus, he told God, he said, I got a thorn in my side. You've got to remove that thing. Uh, and he said, oh, no, no, Paul. Uh -uh. Why? Why would he take the thorn from Paul. He knew that if he took the thorn that Paul would be in his own mind the leader of the pack. He would be head of, oh I can do all these things. No, he knew that the strength that Paul needed was him. The same strength that you and I need this morning is Jesus Christ. I don't need no other power. He is my power. He is my help. He is my glory. He is my eternal life. And only through Jesus do you have eternal life. He's the only one that can give you that. Amen. And why in this world will man sit and wait and say, well, I'm going to wait a while. 
I'm going to have more fun. Well, you just about lost your mind if you think that that's going to give you more fun. It might bring death to you before you had a chance to say, Jesus, come into my life. You know, if you look at sin, I know I'm getting off this subject just for a second. I'll be right back. <laughs> if you look at sin, you know you can start naming them. What does it say in the Bible? What, what did God give us? The Ten Commandments that said do what? Do not steal, kill, right? What else we got? We got a bunch of commands, right? The Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not have no other God before me, right? It says that too. Shall I worship an idol? Uh-oh, that's a tough one. Because we sometimes make TV our idol, or the computer our idol, nowadays the phone. We can't get away from it. It's got, it's got a hold of you. People go to bed with the phone. Instead of kissing their wife, they're kissing the phone. Yeah. <laughs> that's sad, but it's true. We can't leave the device alone. So how much time you spend with God? I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we've got to get out of this funk that we're in. We've got to get back to the basics, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, and live for him. If you're claiming Jesus, either don't claim it or say, ah, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm lost. You need to have a relationship with him. He's first and foremost in your life. And then those children and your wife sitting beside you, that's the next one. And then the church. See, that's the way it goes. Children need their father. They need their father. I know fathers have got to work. Don't, I'm going to give you a little something at the end about that, but think about this. When we look at our lives in a whole, we look at the sin part that we went through with the Ten Commandments, you can say, well, I ain't killed anybody. I hadn't had an affair and had an adulterous affair. I haven't done this. I haven't. Well, if you were so good, why did Jesus have to come? Man can't, that won't get you to heaven. Faith without works is dead, being alone. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourself. If you could do it yourself, hallelujah, praise God. You got a home in heaven, but you don't, you can't do it. Why did there's John 3, 16, 17, 18. What does it say in those scriptures right there? The one you have to look at real hard. You know what condemnation is and to be condemned to, to hell? It's for refusing to receive Jesus Christ. That's the worst sin that you could ever commit. The worst. You say, you mean if I killed somebody? Well, you can kill somebody and go to, uh, go to prison if you make it to that. And somebody witnessed you and you received Jesus Christ. Now, I mean, that's between you and God in your heart. You could be saved and still go to heaven. You can have an adulterous affair and you still can go to heaven. Because you repent. Repentance. Repentance. But if you don't ask Jesus to come into your life, save my soul, Lord. I can't do this, but you can you don't have to do anything. He will take you in the spirit of God will enter you and you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. So don't forget that. That's very important. Thing. Don't be walking in condemnation because you're going to hell without Jesus. And I'm telling you that and that's the gospel truth. If you don't believe it, look at John 3, 18. It's there. Okay, moving right along. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him and said, Fear not. Fear not, brother, we got this. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in except Peter, James, and John. And, he, and here they were weeping and bewailing her. And he said, weep not. She is not dead but asleep. So, well, it's kind of safe. When Jesus said that, we know something, the next is something good coming, right? And it was. The next thing you see is he took her by the hand and called her. Saying, made a rise. Mm. Wouldn't you love to have been there to see that? Wouldn't you love to be standing by someone in a hospital and be praying over them and they're telling you they're dying and they blink their eyes and say, what's going on? 
Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We either believe, Jesus said, I made you a son, a joint heir with me. Your faith is what has made you whole. You have a faith to do anything. He turned his apostles loose, and they went, and pr they prayed over people, healed them, brought them back to life. They did all this, too. You know, they've done that. The story's told. They had power. Why don't you have any power? They don't heal today? They don't heal? Really? It's not always a physical healing for people. It's spiritual. You can witness to a dying person and they can honestly receive Jesus Christ and be in heaven in a twinkling of an eye. It's why we never give up on people. God loves us all. Regardless of circumstance, what you've been into, it doesn't matter. It's when you surrender and give your life to Jesus. That's when the real life begins, eternal life. In other words, we know that the little girl, she came to life. and He said, you go and give her meat, feed her. She's on her feet. What a story, right? Is that the end? There's many, many stories to be told after that. But you see what Jesus can do and what the power of Almighty God does. The power of Jesus is, you know, you, we, we get to a point where we say, oh, yeah, I believe all that. But then we get that point in Satan, he's always trying to buy your time and separate you from God's love and his wisdom. And it's so easy for us to fall into traps, you know. You can fall into these traps. Why do we still sin? As Adrian Rogers, my favorite minister of all time, preaches many a time. He looks at his comment. He's got a church. Well, he had a church. He's dead and gone now. He's in glory. He had a, a church of 4,000 plus people. People would travel all over Tennessee to come to his church to hear him preach. And, they wouldn't, and he told them, don't come to see me. Come to see Jesus. Come to hear the word. I'm just a man. Any man that comes and stands behind the pulpit, he's only a man. He's not God. Well, we have a godly minister right now, but he ain't God. And he said, here, he said that before. Don't come see Mark. He said, come see Jesus. That's what we all need. We need a big dose of Jesus. On Sunday, get that double dose, and then the rest of the week, get you a dose. And you'll be just fine. You won't get sick. Now, I'm talking physical now. I'm talking spiritual. Spiritual, you won't get sick. You'll be just fine. Adrian Rogers says this. Let me read you this. This is good. He said, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman. Now, this is uh, from Galatians. I'm reading you from Galatians 4, 4 through 7. This is what it says. If you turn in your Bible, you read right along with me. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons, and because ye are sons, we are, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. Got that? Crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then you're an heir of God through Jesus Christ. Now, that's what Galatians 4, 7 says. Then he talked with the man. Here's what came, this, how this came about. He said, one father told me this. So Adrian, it was so important to him, and he, he wrote it down. He said, you can't do anything about your ancestors, but you can certainly do something about your descendants. One father said, if I had it all to do over again. Ooh, that's a powerful statement. Lord, wouldn't some of us love to have it all to do over again. Here's what I would do. Now, you, you need to listen to this. You need to take this to heart. I think this is something that, that I don't know. Usually I don't read these things, but this came up and I read it. I love my wife more in front of my children. I laugh with my children more at their mistakes 
and our joys. I'd listen more even to the youngest child. I'd be more honest about my own weaknesses. Ooh, that's tough for men. And stop pretending perfection. I would pray differently for my children. Instead of focusing on me, I'd focus on them. I would do more things with my children. I would be more encouraging and bestow more praise to them and would pay more attention to the little things. Deeds and words and love and kindness. And finally, if I had to do it all over again, I would share God more intimately with my family. Boy, that's, that's a big one right there for all of you. Share God more intimately with my family. I would use every ordinary thing that happened in every ordinary day to point them to God. Dads. One little quote for dads. If there's going to be music in your home, you're going to have to see to it because God has made you the leader of the band. All you fathers agree with that? If you're the leader, as Jesus said, you're the leader of that household. If you're the leader of that household, you better bring the right music in the house. You better bring that praise in, and you better glorify those little kids. You better love your wife. He gave you a whole list of things you better start working on. You're younger. I'm old, so I don't have to worry about all them things, right? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> I had to love my great-grandchildren more, right? So it passes on to all of us. I think this message for Father's Day was appropriate. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed preparing it. I, uh, when Mark asked me to do this, it was on again, off again. He, I don't know if I'm going out. So I kind of give up. I said, well, I, I, I don't have a message anyway. But he said, no, I feel so bad. But I didn't want him to get sick so he couldn't be here. <laughs> and I didn't curse him yet. I did not. Don't y'all tell it, but I cursed him. But it has been a blessed day for me, for you fathers. It's good to have my son here today, my granddaughter, which has been coming. I want her to continue to be here. And that's up to her husband to make sure she gets here. And then, uh, and then her mother-in-law, uh, it's just a blessing. I'm blessed. I'm a blessed man. Like I said, the, the older I get, the worse health I have. But man, my spiritual health is so good. I'm loving it. But anyway, I love you all. Every one of you, I'm here as a deacon in the church, I'm usually watching all you people, keeping an eye on you, trying to help you. I hope and pray I try to help you. If I don't, I need to move on to do something else. But this is what it's all about, people. Church, unity, love. There's enough love here. This week was beautiful. Bible school, Kendra. Beautiful. You touched older hearts as the little kids were touched. And that's what it's all about. Always touching the lives of others. That's Jesus Christ, right? That's what he wants us to do. And so now let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I ask you if you have anything going on in your life. That's what this altar is here for. It's to come and pray. You're not coming to see me. No. And now if you wanted to join this church or had something you want to talk to me about, I'm available. But if you want to come and pray, if you want to come to repentance with the Lord today, something on your heart is troubling you, you need to change, whatever it may be, now's the time to do that. Barbara, if you give uh, pray our invitation hymn, while you're walking there, I'm going to have a brief prayer with you. Heavenly Father, Lord, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Father. We thank you that uh, we set aside this day for Father's Day. We just thank you, Father, that you, for your precious love that you have given us. And you're always there standing waiting for us to change our minds, to be renewed. For we know that all things work together for good to those that love God. And Father, we do love you. We confess you today. And we just pray that if there's someone here that does not have Jesus Christ, that they want to come forward, all they got to do is come and say, Father, I know that I'm a sinner. Father, I need you in my life. And right now I ask you to forgive my sin. And I believe in my heart that you raised God from the dead. And I'll tell that person right here, right at this altar, now you are saved because that's what it takes to believe in Jesus Christ. Confess your sin. And Father, we just ask you now that you bless the 
this time that we sing this song, this invitation song. Bless us and keep us in your grace and your mercy, Father, for we love you and we pray that all that's done and said here today will lift these people up, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Please stand as we sing hymn number 434, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. dismissed uh, a couple things Bible study Wednesday night I pray that you all will, a whole bunch of you will come we need all of you for Bible study and be praying this week for our revival services I pray that God will start changing me for revival I pray that you have the same prayer and it needs to start in us and Donaldson I talked to him this week He's excited about being here, and he can't wait to be with us. And if you've never heard Donaldson Jones preach, you've got to come at least one. Well, you see him Sunday, but he's amazing. He is an amazing man, a man of God. And we just pray that you will be in prayer faithfully for that. And today, being Father's Day, I'm going to ask my son to close us in prayer. <coughs> Father, we thank you for the time to be in your house this morning yes. to hear the word of God preached, Father. And uh, we know every time that, that your word is open, Father, it's something we can apply to our lives, Father, and make us better, make us live for you, make us keep our eyes on you, Father, because we know this world has nothing to offer us. We just mm -hmm. praise the name of Jesus. Thank you for giving your life on that cross for our sin. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that Today, you would watch over us as we leave this place. And Father, I pray especially for everybody here. If there's one person that does not know Jesus, Father, if there, there's no set time, we can call upon you and come to you anytime, 24 7, as you'll save my soul. Yes, sir. So, Father, I just I praise you and thank you that you saved my soul. I thank you that I'm here today. And, uh, thank you for all the fathers. I ask your blessing upon all the fathers today. Give them a good day with their families. and. We just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.